North Korea has that. 32 out of 33 modern industrialized countries have that. How are you going to pay for it? We're going to be like North Korea. We'll have to borrow the money from China. Where are you going to find the money? And we know that this burden falls particularly in an unequal way on black folks and other people of color. And we just got to go ahead and put that in the testimony as well. Like if you, yes, and especially black women, and if you are poor or among the working poor or the barely middle class in these United States of America, and you do what you were asked to do, what you were told to do, the thing, the very thing that you were told that was going to lift you up, and you do that thing, and then you find yourselves walking across a stage with a backpack full of debt in, on your back and debt in your hands and a degree, and it is immoral to do so, and we calling it out. You know what I'm saying? When I say hands up, I need you to say fight back. You ready? Hands up! Fight back! 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 Hey, and welcome to my YouTube show. Uh, today I'm going to be uh, reading an article that Warren Mosler put up on Twitter. Um, and it's uh, an interesting one at that. Uh, as you can see, it's a two-minute long one, so it's not going to be a, a very long episode. Um, I will be doing an update on rubles and stuff like that on my Substack later on, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, so this is from the uh, Peterborough Examiner in Canada, I believe. Um, a letter, I guess, uh, Canadian debt propaganda is based on myth. This is by, who is it by? <laughs> uh, I guess it doesn't matter at the moment. Anyway, um, the April 20 Examiner had a large color photo on page three. It showed Franco Terrazano. I guess it's, I'm, I'm hoping that's how you pronounce the name. Federal director of the Canadian Taxpayers Foundation standing beside a trailer that displayed a national debt clock. It indicated that the federal debt had, had clicked past 1.163 trillion. Let's see about this one. As you can see, that's the person I'm guessing they're referring to. And the picture states uh, Canada's federal debt. Uh, your share, and it has a very large number. Anyway, uh, Terrazano, and, uh, and unfortunately many, uh, many others think that this is a bad thing. I think it's wonderful. Why is it wonderful? That number represents what can, uh, Canada has spent into the uh, Canadian economy since Confederation and did not tax out or tax back. It sits as assets in the account of our pensions and businesses and has paid for many other good things like the National Railway, the Trans-Canada Highway, National Parks, the St. Lawrence Skyway, I'm sorry, 
the First and Second World Wars, etc. None of that debt was borrowed like yours and mine, nor are they like provincial and municipal debt. Canada is a sovereign country issuing nation. That means Parliament approves a budget and then the Bank of Canada marks up the government's accounts accordingly. If you would like to see the that see how that works, watch a YouTube video featuring Warren Mosler, who wrote about a book called The Seven Deadly Innocent Frauds. You can buy the book or read it for free on his website, uh, MoserEconomics.com. Also search YouTube for Stephanie Kelton, uh, who wrote the best-selling book, The Deficit Myth, or read her book. Canada's first governor of the Bank of Canada, Graham Towers, was asked about MPs in February, uh, asked by MPs in February of 1942, if the wartime debt was a private sec sector asset. He readily agreed that it was. In the photo, Duranzo is pointing at the average Canadian taxpayer's share of the debt. The number seems to be uh, $30,201.56. That means taxpayers collectively own that amount as an asset in the above-mentioned things. Plus, our national airport better, uh, federal contributions to electricity and production. The Trent Can uh, Canal System, National Research Council, Can uh, Canada Post, Canada Pension Plan, Health Care, Daycare, uh, Universities, and much more. Seems like one hell of a good idea. Toronto, uh, Darizano, uh, com a campaign, and Pierre uh, Pilver, I don't even know if I try to pronounce the last name, leadership, Ideas are based on myths, like many myths. They don't under, they don't stand up uh, under scrutiny. They weaponize the so-called debt and deficit for par, par, for par, partisan political purposes. Okay, so let's see. Kind of switch gears here. Um, first of all, I think uh, the last article I read, uh, you should definitely do as the author says. Um, I don't, I don't know if I, I don't think I actually got that as far as who was the one that wrote that. Let me see. Uh, did that comments after? Okay, no, I don't I actually don't. I don't. I literally don't see the uh, the author. Maybe that's because it's a letter, a letter to the editor and things. So maybe okay. So next one, I will be reading from Bill Mitchell's. Um, Australian uh, uh, monetary theory blog, uh, as you can see, it's on Bilbo Economic uh, Outlook .net. and it states Australia inflation rises, but with no wage pressures, evidence evidence that there is no case for interest rate hikes or rise, rises. I tried to read one of his stuff, uh, one of his things yesterday. Uh, I did my best, but don't think it went all that well. But anyway. Um, this one is, uh, the tweets have started already demanding an interest rise in May at the next RBA board meeting. Bankers, media commentators who are, who just are con con conduits, <laughs> conduits for the bankers, all with uh, vested interest. Today's data release from the Australian Bureau of Statistics, ABS, Consumer Price Index Australia for today, uh, which I've I been probably checked for today for hours as well, if there is one, uh, has fueled their mania. Inflation in March quarter 2022 rose to 2.1% or 5.5% for the last 12 months on the back of rising automotive, uh, automotive fuel cost, uh, uncompetitive cartel, and deliberate government petro tax policies. Global supply chain disruptions uh, or pandemic and material shortages, supply chain and bushfires. As long as these influences are present, inflation will remain at elevated levels. But with the wage pressures absent, it is hard to make a case that the rising inflation is now entrenched. Certainly, the long-term expectation measures expectations measures would not suggest that. 
I cannot see why the RBA will hike rates in May. More evidence of rage, uh, rage, well, rage, uh, no, a uh, wage pressures would be needed, one suspects. The summary consumer price index results for March quarter 2022 are as follows. The all uh, the all groups uh, CPI rose by 2.1% for the quarter. The all groups CPI rose by 5.1% over the last 12 months. Uh, the major determinants were automotive fuel up 11%. And new uh, dwelling purchased by owner and occupiers up 5.7 percent. The trimmed mean series rose by trimmed mean series rose by 1.4 percent, or up uh, up from 1 percent, and by 3.7 percent over the previous year, or up from 2.6 percent. That's 2.6 percent. The weighted median series uh, rose by 1%, up from 0.9%, and by 2.6% by over the previous year, or up from 2.6%. The ABS media release noted, in quotes, continued shortages of building supplies and labor, heightened freight costs, and ongoing strong uh, demand contributed to price, uh, to price rises, for newly built dwellings. <coughs> uh, fewer grant payments made this quarter from the federal government's home builder program and similar states, uh, state-based housing construction programs also contribute to the rise. The CPI's automotive fuel uh, series reached a record level for the third consecutive quarter with fuel price rises across uh, seen across all three months of the March quarter. The rise in uh, ter 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 education okay, reflected the continuing impact of updated student and contrib contribution uh, bans and fees introduced last year. Short assessment. The inflation is being driven by a relatively narrowed, narrow set of circumstances without, or sorry, related, related to the supply disruptions from the global pandemic and shortages of and timber due to the massive bushfires in the late 2019, early 2020, which burned down lots of forests and created a shortage in timber. The OPEC uh, cartel is pushing oil prices up and significantly caused pressures from explicit government decisions that fewer grants, user payer pays in higher education, etc. have pushed prices up. It is hard to see this as an entrenched episode in, uh, independent of the pandemic, simply issues a possibly and, and possibly the Ukrainian war. It is also hard to see how interest rates rises will reduce these pressures. Um, it says see below, but you anyway, uh, update. Here's uh, there's a graphic that shows um, the largest part of the world, Shanghai, as a result of the COVID-19 uh, lockdown. There, there. This is a supply constraint and nothing to do with fiscal deficits. Central bank bonds purchases. Etc. Thanks to marine traffic, the red dots, which there are a lot, uh, are tankers, and the green dots are cargo vessels. There is a lot of both. Okay, so trend in inflation: the headline inflation rate increased by 2.1 percent in March of 2022, and 5.1 percent over the last 12 months up from the annual rate of 3.7% recorded last uh, quarter. But the rise is transitory, mostly an adjustment in fuel prices as transport resumes and building materials. Many commentators are claiming there is an upward trend in inflation, but once we take out these transitory factors, the trend at best is modest. The following graph shows the quarterly inflation rate since the uh, March quarter of 2005. 
And basically, in order to see this, you'd have to go to billboard.economicoutlook.net, or I'll just put the link in the description below. I'll probably do either one. Uh, to put the uh, the but to put this in uh, into historical perspective. Uh, there is a series since uh, you know another uh, in, uh, another um, image. Let me kind of go down here. There we go. Uh, what is driving inflation in Australia? The following bar um, okay. <laughs> chart compare the contribution to the quarterly change in the CPI from for March 2022 uh, compared to December of 2021. There are different colored bars, and let's see. The highest, uh, the longest bar is housing. Um, we also have utilities, of course. Uh, let's see. Let's see, because they're both, because they're green and blue. Let me see what that would, either way, it looks like housing uh, has gone up, obviously, as far as upward goes. Uh, food, obviously, of all have also uh, gone up, and yes, a lot of this uh, does have more to do with transportation in regards to like cargo and other things like that. So, uh, transport, yeah, is 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 one of the the biggest blues as far as that part goes. Let's see, uh, contributions to annual inflation, all groups. Uh, let's see, financial services, not so much. Yeah, it's a combination of all the above as far as the line goes. But anyway, um, very long line, I'll just say. Um, the four measures, uh, inflation and expected inf uh, inflation. The following graph shows four, uh, four measures of expected inflation expectations produced by RBA inflation expectations for uh G3 from the uh, March and uh, 2005 to March of last year. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's a lot of graphs here. So let's see. I'll just go to the next one. Again, uh, I'll go to the link below and you'll see what I'm talking about very much. Uh, implications for monetary policy. What does this all mean for monetary policy? There is some modest rise in expected inflation, but the, mo but the most reliable long-term indicator is well within the RBA range. The private banking ec economists that are continually wheeled out in media to co comment on prospective interest options obviously talk of interest rates uh, rises because their organizations benefit, which poses the question as to why they are used in the way in this way and held out as independent authorities. This is what I've been saying this whole time. Uh, but in my view, with no, vest, with no vested interest, the inflation trends provide no basis for any expectation that the RBA will hike interest rates in the coming months. Uh, the RBA has consistently said that they will not increase rates until wage pressures are pushing inflation up. Wage pressures are not evident as yet, which next data will be on the 18th of May. There are some obvious and predictable increases in cost uh, pressures due to the economy trying to deal with the pandemic, which is being exacerbated by anti-competitive behavior in world oil markets. Some government policy changes have pushed the March quarter inflation rate up. None of that, what none of that represents any major structural bias towards a persistently higher inflation rates. The RBA uses a range of measures to ascertain whether they believe there are persistent inflation threats. See, uh, he, the, the blog Australian Inflation Trending Down, the lower oil prices, uh, subdual uh, economy is a blog he would like for you to read. Uh, also on the website, so you can do that. Uh, for a detailed discuss, discussion about the use of headline rate of inflation and other analytical inflation measures, the Consumer Price Index uh, is designed to reflect a broad basket of goods and services or the regime, which are representative of the cost of living. You can learn more about it. Again, there's a, uh, a link uh, as well. The RBA's formal inflation targeting rule aims to keep an uh, annual inflation rate measured by the consumer price index between 2 and 3% of the 
over the next uh, over the medium term. The RBA also does not rely on the headline inflation rate. Instead, they use two measures of underlying inflation, which attempt to net out the most volatile price, uh, price movements. You understand uh, to understand the difference be, different between a headline rate and other non-volatile uh, measures of inflation, you might like to read the March 2010 uh, RBA bulletin, which contains an interesting article, Measures of Underlying uh, Inflation. The article explains the different, in, different inflation measures the RBA considers and the logic behind them. The concept of underlying inflation is an attempt to separate the thread, uh, the persistent component of inflation, from the short-term fluctuations in prices. The main source of short-term noise comes from fluctuations in commodity markets and agricultural conditions, policy changes, or seasonal or, or infrequent pri uh, price set resettings. The RBA uses several different measures of underlying inflation, which are generally ca uh, categorized as exclusion-based measures and trimmed mean measures. So you can so you can exclude a particular net of volatile uh, items, uh, namely fruit, vegetables, and automotive fuel, to get a better picture of the persistent inflation pr pressures in the economy. The main weaknesses with this method is that there can be large temporary movements to in uh, uh, components of the CPI that are not excluded and volatile components can still be trended up as an energy prices are down. The alternative trend mean measures are popular among central bankers. The author says in quotes, the, trend, the trimmed mean rate of inflation is defined as the average rate of inflation after trimming away a certain percentage of the distribution of price changes at both ends of that distri distribution. These measures are calculated by ordering the seasonally adjusted price changes for all CPI components in any period from lowest to highest, turning away those that lie at the uh, two outer edges of the distribution of prices changes for that period and then calculating an average inflation rate from the remaining set of price changes. Uh, so you so you get some measure of uh, central tendency not to not by exclusion but by giving lower weighted weighting to volatile elements. Two trimmed measures are used by the RVA, the 15% trimmed mean, which trims always 50% of items with both the smallest and the largest price changes. And B, the weighted uh, way, the 10, 15% of items with both the small weight. And B, the, <laughs> I'm about to reread that. The weighted median, which is the uh, price change at the 50th, 50th percentile, by way of distribution of price uh, changes. Let's see, the blog he wants to read now is Australian inflation trending down, lower oil, oil prices and subdued economy from uh, January 29, 2015 for more detailed discussion. Uh, okay, so there's another graph, uh, annual growth in RBAs, various inflation measures. Uh, there's a blue line that goes all the way to 5.0. And that would be in, I believe in 20, 2022, as far as the far goes, how to how to we assess these results? First, the economy is starting to adjust to the hard supply constraints imposed by the pandemic. Two, inflationary expectations are relatively contained, especially the most reliable indicator of long-term inflationary expectations. Number three, the RBA has consistently said they will not increase rates until there, there is signs of wage pressures driving the, sh driving the show. Four, the RBA shows, no, sorry, knows that, the, that with no wage pressure evident, increasing interest rate rises will do nothing to grow forest more quickly to ease the timber shortage nor send a signal to OPEC to stop profit gouging they ha they also know that rate ri uh, rate rises will do nothing to make ship ships deliver goods more quickly 
Five, they know that if raising rates do uh, ra uh, rising rates, excuse me, do anything, they will worsen cost measures on firms. Six, I don't think they will hike rates in May. Conclusion: The inflation rate in Australia is following world trends upwards, although it is still below the U.S. levels. The major sources of price increases on temporary adjusted adjustments back to pre-pandemic levels, anti-competitive cartel behavior, and the war in, in uh, Ukraine, let's say Iraq. Um, in Australia's case, these influences are supplemented by shortages of building materials due to bushfires and soon the major floods, which will also impact on the food supply. And he concludes that with this is that that is enough for today. Anyway, and he's right. <laughs> that is enough for today as far as that part goes. I want to thank you for listening. Uh this will be going on my uh uh I think YouTube. Um anyway, so I'd like to thank you for watching, for listening, whatever you're doing as far as that part goes, and I'll be doing a update on the finance the finances of russia ukraine and all that in the area later on on my substack that's calvin taylor.substack.com uh you can leave a a comment below now subscribe uh hit the notification button uh give me give me okay give me a thumbs down whichever you prefer just give me something as far as the bar goes and share either way I hope you guys have a good day, have a good night, and I'll look forward to talking to you guys on Substack. Peace out for now.